in neighborhoods around Tokyo. Volunteers for months now have been digging for answers, looking to uncover the truth as to how much radiation has made its way to the nation's capital. Investigative journalist Kota Kinoshita has been the focal point of the effort. He says the test results from soil samples analyzed in professional labs show dangerous hot spots throughout the city. There are many areas with high levels of radioactive substances. The levels there are the same as in parts around Chernobyl where people had to evacuate. The need to evacuate parts of a sprawling capital of 35 million may have once seemed an incredible prospect. But some experts say the possibility can no longer be ignored. And mothers like Yayoi Inuma are just one of hundreds who believe their children are already suffering the effects. Ten-year-old Hannah has had severe joint pain in the arms and legs, deep rings under her eyes and extreme tiredness to the point she sleeps for hours during the day. All symptoms of radiation sickness, say nuclear safety experts. If it was just one thing, that would mean it was something else. But all the symptoms came at once. When we left Tokyo for a bit this summer, she got better right away. The government's own team of researchers downplay the radiation risks, saying their findings show the biggest threat is public paranoia. Regarding the level of radiation and its impact on human beings, there is not that much difference compared to before the disaster. The danger is psychological. People are stressed and anxious. Experts around the world hold very different opinions as to how much radiation people can safely be exposed to. The Japanese government sets a maximum of 20 millisieverts a year, but new research suggests even a tiny amount ingested into the body can cause severe illness or cancer. Mika Noro spent the past 20 years in communities around Chernobyl. She's cared for children who fell ill with cancer or suffered growth defects. Most lived in areas where government scientists said radiation levels were not a threat. I am bitterly frustrated and cannot forgive governments for their ignorance. We have seen firsthand how children suffered. We can't let the same thing happen in Japan. What cannot be argued is that the young are the most vulnerable to radiation. In Tokyo, hundreds of expecting mothers are considering or have already chosen to leave. For Yayoi Inuma, a move is not at the moment financially possible. So for now, she keeps her daughter indoors and only buys food grown outside the affected areas. Hoping it will give her child as normal and as healthy a life as possible. Steve Chow, Al Jazeera, Tokyo.